Hello, my name is Michael Trower. I'm an emergency medicine consultant and now I'm going to show you how to perform ultrasound guided vascular access. This is a really useful skill. I use it almost every day for peripheral lines, sometimes for central lines and occasionally even for arterial lines or ABGs. The first step is selecting the vein. So the ideal vein would be relatively superficial and removed from important structures like arteries or nerves. I would start to look in the forearm and if I didn't find anything there, move on to the upper arm where there are three main veins, the basilic medially, the brachial centrally and the cephalic laterally. If I couldn't find anything in the whole upper limb, I would then move on to the lower limb as a last resort. So here are the upper limb veins. As you can see, the basilic vein is medial and this is usually my preferred option because it's away from any arteries or nerves. The brachial vein is often paired and runs alongside the brachial artery and also the median nerve can sometimes overlie these veins so you need to be a bit careful here. And then the final vein in the upper limb is the cephalic vein which lies laterally. So this is an image of my upper limb. So at the bottom of the screen is the humerus, at the top is the biceps and in between there are two black round structures. These are the brachial artery and the brachial vein. And then next to the vein, there's a bright or hyperechoic structure, which looks a bit like a bundle of grapes. This is the median nerve. In this video, I applied pressure with the probe. The brachial vein collapses, but the brachial artery remains pulsatile. Now I slide the probe medially to identify the basilic vein, which is also easily compressible with gentle pressure. So what equipment will you need for ultrasound guided cannulation? Well, as well as your standard IV cannulation equipment, You'll also need an ultrasound machine with a high frequency linear probe, a cannula of an appropriate length, and we'll talk about what this is later, some kind of sterile probe cover, I normally use a tegaderm, and some ultrasound gel, ideally in a sachet rather than a bottle. So I'll now demonstrate how to perform peripheral IV access. So the first thing to consider is ergonomics. So have the ultrasound machine screen at your eye level, adjust the height of the patient's bed, Consider even bringing in a chair so that you're at a nice comfortable position. Have all your equipment close at hand so you're not having to stretch or reach. Take the ultrasound machine in your non-dominant hand, so for me I'm right-handed so I'll hold it in my left hand, and have the probe marker to your left as you approach the patient. Place the ultrasound probe on the patient's arm and then slide up and down the arm to check the axis of the vein. If you can keep the vein in the middle of the screen as you slide up and down the arm, this is the direction the vein is heading. Once you're happy with your insertion point, bring the vein into the middle of the screen, which relates to the middle of the probe. Stabilize your hand on the patient, pick up your cannula, and insert the cannula at the midpoint of the probe. Okay, so that was the basic approach to ultrasound guided cannulation. But there's one other concept that I want to explain, which is following the tip of the needle. So if you're holding your probe in your non-dominant hand, and you're holding the cannula in your dominant hand, if the probe remains static, your needle could have passed way beyond the probe, and you're actually just visualizing the shaft of the needle, and you have no idea what's going on at the tip. So you need to be constantly moving the probe back and forward you move the probe away until the needle tip disappears and then back until it reappears and only then do you know you're visualizing the very tip of the needle. So in this way, as you advance the needle, you're constantly moving the probe to and fro, making sure you're on the very tip all the way down until you enter the vein. So here's a video of me cannulating a patient's basilic vein. So just look for that bright white needle tip coming in from the top of the screen. It's pushing over the top of the vein and then it pops through into the vein. I then advance the needle tip a little further along the vein to make sure we're well into the vein before finally advancing the cannula over the needle. In this video I'm cannulating a brachial vein. So the needle tip again coming in from the top of the screen going through the biceps muscle and popping into the vein and then I just extend it a little bit further along that vein before advancing the cannula over the needle. Note the brachial artery adjacent to the vein and the median nerve to the medial side. So the technique that I've described is in transverse axis following the needle tip all the way down into the vein. But there are a couple of other techniques. 
So you can perform this technique without direct vision. So if in this technique, simply align the vein in the middle of the screen, insert the needle at the middle of the probe, then drop the probe and simply advance until you get flashback. This technique is less reliable, but a lot easier to learn. And another technique is to cannulate the vein in long axis. So for this technique, rotate the probe 90 degrees to bring out the whole length of the vein and insert the cannula along the long axis of the probe. As you can see in this image, you'll then be able to see the whole length of the needle shaft. The drawback of this technique is that you can easily slip off the vein onto an adjacent vessel. So you've gone to all the trouble of putting in a brilliant ultrasound guided cannula and you're about to high five all your buddies and then the nurse comes in and says, oh actually that cannula you just put in, it's just tissue. This is really annoying, but it can actually be avoided. So there's actually been research on this topic and they found that two thirds of the cannula needs to be within the vein for it not to tissue. So what this means in practice is if the vein is a centimeter or more deep, then you need to have a longer cannula, so at least five centimeters. Most hospital cannulas are only about three centimeters. So you'll need to get a specific long cannula for this purpose. Okay, so central lines. And the first question here again is vein selection. So there are three options, the internal jugular or IJ, femoral and the subclavian, and all have pros and cons. The IJ is the usual sort of default in the UK, usually the right IJ to avoid the thoracic duct on the left. However, if your patient can't lie flat, you may have to do a femoral. Subclavian is a good option. It doesn't actually need to be done with ultrasound guidance because the anatomy is very consistent. However, the IJ and the femoral should always be done with ultrasound guidance. Here is an image of my neck. So at the top of the screen, we have the sternocleidomastoid muscle. On the medial side, we have the trachea and the bright speckled structure is the thyroid gland. Then adjacent to this is the common carotid artery and the most lateral structure is the internal jugular vein. Here's a video of my neck. Now because I'm sitting up, the IJ is not visible, but now I perform a Valsalva maneuver and suddenly the IJ becomes enlarged. Now we slide up the neck to the bifurcation of the carotid and then down again towards the clavicle. So what we're looking for here before we do a central line is the point at which the vein is most lateral to the artery. We don't want to choose a point where the vein is immediately overlying the artery because then if we go through the back of the vein, we could enter the carotid artery. In this case, as we slide down towards the clavicle, you can see that the IJ is most lateral to the carotid lower down in the neck near the clavicle. So this would be my preferred site of entry. Here is an image of a needle tip within the right internal jugular vein. And here is the same image, but from a longitudinal axis. So you can see the whole shaft of the needle. So what equipment do you need for a central line? Well, generally there'll be a central line kit, which will have most things in it already. It's of course a full sterile technique. So you need gown, mask, sterile gloves, drapes, the full works. If the patient is awake, you'll also need to use local anesthetic. And it's a good idea to have an assistant to pass your equipment. And in case the screen goes onto screen saver mode. I'll now demonstrate how to perform a right internal jugular central line. You'll have the patient's bed adjusted to your own standing height and all your equipment within easy reach so you're not having to strain to reach things during the procedure. Then place the ultrasound probe on the patient's neck. This is the marker and we keep that to our left as we approach the patient. So place the probe on the neck and then slide up and down the neck to look for the ideal entry point. You want to find a point where the vein is lateral to the artery rather than overlying it. Once you've found your point, then stabilize your hand by placing your fingers on the patient's clavicle. Adjust your probe so that the vein is in the middle of the screen, which relates to the middle of the probe. Then when you're happy with your position, take your needle and insert the needle just before the midpoint of the probe. Insert the needle, drawing back on the plunger as you advance until you get flashback. Place the probe down beside the patient. Stabilize your hand on the patient again. Without moving the needle, remove the syringe and insert your guide wire. You can then pull the needle back over the top of the guide wire. Before dilating, 
check that the guide wire is in the vein by putting the probe back on the patient and rotating 90 degrees to look for the guide wire in the internal jugular vein in long axis. So there are a couple of alternative techniques. You can do the whole procedure in long axis or you can do a two operator technique where one person holds the probe and one the needle. Personally I think it's better to try and learn to do the whole procedure yourself as if you have control over both the probe and the needle you can make those fine movements to ensure you're following the needle tip all the way down into the vein. If you're interested in learning more on this topic here's a couple of websites the first on peripheral IV access and the second on central access. Thanks very much for listening.